Hi. So this is a joint talk with um, with my supervisor Kira McGoldrick. Um, so I'm going to talk about multi-key leveled FHE and and multi-identity FHE. So the two main results that we have is first of all, it's we have a multi-identity leveled uh, BFHE scheme. So what that means is that um, previous identity-based FHE schemes, well, there was one in particular by Gentry in, in crypto 2013, and um, it only supports evaluation on ciphertexts that have the same identity. So if you encrypt your ciphertext with the same identity, you can only do evaluation on those. So we want to be able to extend that so you could do evaluation on ciphertexts with different identities, crypto with different identities. Um, so that's the first result. The second result um, is probably more has more practical applications, and that's multi-key FHE. Um, so that's in the public key model, and we do that from L LWE. And so this scheme supports a, a polynomial number of, of keys. So you can specify um, how many you need. So just the syntax, first of all, for multi-identity IBFHE. Um, I know it's kind of a long to say. Um, so, so the syntax, first of all, so the set up key gen algorithms are standard from IB and save and encrypt and decrypt and ev evaluate just takes in uh, a circuit and a bunch of uh, a sequence of ciphertexts and it outputs the evaluated ciphertext. So the syntax is pretty st straightforward. I guess the only may maybe change that uh, I guess is different from IB would be the decryption algorithm which takes in uh, a sequence of, of secret keys. So that's for, uh, to decrypt something in, a multi in the multi key setting um, you, need, you need every user to contribute their, their secret key for a giant de decryption. Um, so that's the only change in syntax, really, of, of, that's worth of noting there. Um, so I'm going to, first of all, get to the basics of our construction, which is the GSW scheme from 2013. So in, in GSW, uh, ciphertext is simply an n by n matrix. And it's, all its entries are small, so it's typically a binary matrix. Um, and then a secret key for an entity is, is an n-dimensional vector. Um, so we'll get to see, first of all, uh, we can encrypt small messages. So typically we encrypt messages uh, in zero and one space. We encrypt bits typically. Um, and we say a matri uh, matrix encrypts a uh, value mu um, if we multiply it by the secret key vector and we end up getting um, a, a, a scaled multiple of, of the secret key vector plus some, some small noise vector. And so th this can be viewed as an approximate eigenvector. Um, so it's, it's, an, it's a nice simple scheme and it, it has some, some very interesting properties. Um, first of all, an additive homomorphism is quite simple to achieve. Uh, you simply add, add the two, two matrices, and um, you see that you get the encryption of their, their sum. And then the same with the multiplicative homomorphism, um, straightforward enough as well. And w w so we, we, get that we get one of those. So we're going to start off with, with a warm-up uh, construction. Just to, give an, just to give an example of how, how we do this. Uh, so we, our, again, our main goal is to allow evaluation on ciphertext that are encrypted with different identities. So let's say you've got, you've got someone encrypts, their, encrypts a message with ID1, for example, and someone else encrypts a message with ID2. And we'd like to be able to do some computation on both these ciphertexts together and get, get, get the right results. So we'd like to be able to, to run a circuit that takes inputs regardless of what, what, what the identity is. So it can be either encrypted with identity one or encrypt identity two. So this is the simple warm-up version. So our goal is, at the end, is to produce a 2n by 2n uh, matrix. So in this case, usually this would generalize to dn by dn, where d is the number of identities you have. So uh, in this simple case, we have a 2n by 2n matrix that we get at the end. So we, our goal is to try to produce this 2n by 2n matrix. And we, we know that its size is just going to depend polynomially on the number of distinct identities. So in this case, the number of distinct identities is two. So the, the, we, we are going to allow the size, um, we're going to allow the size to depend on that. And that's because we need to have encode some information about the, the identity. So intuitively, we, we, we have to require that, 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 that size um, condition. So 
So the high-level sketch, then, is, and again, before we get, we get into any concrete details, um, what we do is we try to, first of all, transfer, transform um, both the input ciphertext, C1 and C2. We try to transform them into what we call an expanded matrix. And again, this is going to be 2n by 2n. And then we're going to try to use the, the properties we've seen from GSW, the additive and multiplicative homomorphism, and we can evaluate a circuit then gate by gate. So we can evaluate, evaluate a full circle, a circuit as normal. So we, we would evaluate starting with the expanded ciphertext instead of the fresh ciphertext as you would do in GSW. So the only difference there is, the, is that we're dealing with larger matrices, and that's the only the, the, the performance difference that we get in, in for the evaluation. And of course, this, this as I said before, generalizes um, completely to any number of uh, distinct identities, any polynomial number of distinct identities. Um, I might come back to these in a while. We're going to review some basic operations that are at the core of the GSW construction, and we also use them in our, in our scheme as well. Um, so one of them is bit decomposition, and the idea of, of bit decomposition is that bit decomposition it takes, in, it takes in a vector and it outputs a, a larger vector, and it, it, it consists of it, it, its representation in bits, so from least significant to most significant. And then we've an inverse algorithm that we can define as well, which it does the opposite, except it's also defined for, um, for any, any binary input. So it, it ends up um, um, recomputing re 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 um, re 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 whatever initial value was before we convert it to binary. So this is just for binary decomposition and, and just for going the other way around. Uh, flatten is a very is similar algorithm to bit decomp, except it, it, applies it, it applies the inverse algorithm first and then applies, then it, it, it flattens it out. It, de, it, 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 it just trans, it transforms it to bits. Uh, powers of two takes in, takes in a vector and it outputs an n-dimensional vector. In this case, it, 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 it multiplies everything by, by all the powers of two. So it's an easy way to do multiplication. Uh, where we we're, we'll see that later, and then we can also define these these algorithms over matrix inputs. So instead of taking vectors as arguments, they can take in matrices. And in that case, uh, we just apply the algorithm to every to every row in the, in the matrix. So we have two simple properties here. Just just to point out, to, to, and the first one, if we take any bit de decomposition of, of a vector, and along with the powers, of, and we take the, dot pro the inner product with the powers of two. Uh, we're going to get their inner product. And the second one as well, if we, if we, if we flatten a particular vector and we, we, we get the, take the inner product with powers of two of another vector, we end up getting their product. So it, it, these are quite um, useful properties that we'll, we'll, we'll get to later. So just an overview then of so what, what GSW did in their, in their paper in, in, in um, it, it's two years ago now, um, they put forward an attribute-based and an identity-based uh, FHE scheme. And they're, they're, they have a compiler that works with any LWE, any, any IB scheme that has been um, based on learning with errors can be compiled into um, an, an identity-based FHE scheme. So they have a simple compiler, and it requires the, the scheme to, to satisfy three basic properties. So we have to have the ciphertext and secret key vectors. Um, they have to be, I mean, this, the extra constraint there is that the first co uh, coefficient, which is usually the case of the secret key vector, is one. Um, the second property is that we need a, we need a small dot product. Um, so if we have an encryption of zero, uh, when we decrypt, we should get something quite, quite small. And then finally, the security requirement is indistinguishability from Uniform under the hardest of LWE, and as I said, all, all the known, all the schemes I know of, anyway, all the LWE schemes um, um, fit, um, satisfy these properties, so they can be compiled into an FHE scheme. And the, the only limitation of, of of the GSW approach, to, the motivation for this work was that it, it was restricted to just single identities. So it could only do evaluation on ciphertext with the same identity. So if we have a, a scheme, as we mentioned, that satisfies these properties, we can use the GSW compiler and we can, we can uh, get an IBFHE scheme. And the scheme, it's, it's, quite, um, it's quite a simple uh, of an adaptation. Um, 
So the, first of all, the, the secret keys, um, you, you take the secret key vector that you get from the underlying scheme. So I'm going to call it E here. So the underlying scheme is E, the LWE-based scheme. You, you take the secret key vector and you run powers of two and you get, you, you, we end up getting um, a, a, another, another vector for a secret key which we'll use, which will have larger coefficients. And that's what we'll use for uh, decryption. Uh, to encrypt any, any bit under some identity ID, um, we, we essentially generate n. So n is the, is the size of the matrix. So we have to generate n different encryptions of zero. So each encryption is zero, we will use the E scheme. And so, so for each of the, what we do is we, 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 take, um, we, we take that matrix that we get from all the, all, the, all the encryptions of zero, and we bit decompose it. So we get the bit representation of it. And then we finally add it to a scale version of the identity matrix. So this is to add on the plain text. And then we finally flatten it down so we end up with binary, binary entries in the matrix. And so this is quite a, quite a nice scheme and it, it, um, it, it, ha it, ha it has some nice traits that in, uh, because we, we can we flatten every time, the noise doesn't get, get, get too big. So we want to try to extend this approach and to the multi-identity setting so where we can have any number of, of ident identities being, being specified, so any, any number and no, no restriction on that. Um, so we're going to, first of all, uh, take a look at some of the in intuition behind this, so how a compiler for multi-identity IVFAG would work. Um, so let's say we have two ciphertexts, C1 and C2, and they, they each encrypt um, U1 and U2. And let's say we've got two secret keys. So in the, this is the underlying scheme E. So we've got the two underlying secret keys are um, S1 and S2. And the, the recipients can, can each compute, compute their, um, the larger vector v, V1 and V2 that can be derived from S1 and S2. And it's going to hold, as we saw earlier, it, this property is going to hold where, we, where we, we get the product of the, the matrix and, and a vector, and we end up getting a scaled vector plus some noise. And so this will hold, and we can perform any evaluation we want on, on C1 and C2 together. That's our, that's our aim. We want to be able to do anything we want, any, and run any circuit on these two ciphertexts, even though they're, they're encrypted with different identities. And as we said, we, we want the, the size of the ciphertext. We want it to grow, it should only grow if with a number of distinct identities. So if you've got, in this case, if, if ID1 is not equal to ID2, we have two distinct identities, so we, it's going to grow with two. Um, so the compactness condition as well as the size to depend polynomial on, 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 on D. So D is typically our, our parameter. So the first thing we have to do is we have to um, tra transform uh, the matrix that we get into an expanded matrix. And so let's say we take any, any, any input matrix that, um, that, as we said, encrypts mu under ID1, for example. And we're going to denote by C hat, it's expanded matrix. This is going to be the larger form. So in, 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 in this case, it'll be um, this simple example, it'll be 2n by 2n. So we want to, this expanded matrix to satisfy this. We, we, if we take the concatenation of the two, the vertical concatenation of the two um, secret key vectors, v1 and v2, and uh, we multiply it by C, we should get, we should get the plain text by the, the concatenated um, secret key vector plus, plus some noise. So this is what we want, want to achieve. Um, so we have to be able to construct a, a C hat that, that um, satisfies this. So we, we could actually just view our larger expanded matrix as consisting of four sub-matrices, and we can den denote, the, denote these, um, with, with, uh, so Cij for um, the i and j column. So, um, we can look at this simple equation here, and we can, say, we can simplify the top part of it easily if we set the, the top quadrant of our, of, our, um, of, of, our, of our C hat matrix to, to simply C, and then we set the one, we set the one, one, one two entry, so the, the, the top right um, entry to zero. And this will, that will satisfy the top part of the equation. The second part could be satisfied if we can, we, can, we need to find some, some x, x and y, some matrices x and y, uh, there'll be binary matrices. So we need to find two binary matrices, X and Y, uh, such that this, this, uh, we, we, can, we can solve this. 
So we should be able, we, we need, we need um, to solve this equation. So we, this is the main sh technical challenge of, of the paper, trying to find x and y that will, will work here. So for the moment, we're just going to take a step back and, and um, just abstract away from how we actually find um, the solution matrices x and y. And so we're just going to assume we've got this uh, abstraction. We're going to call it a masking system. And the idea of a masking system is that uh, we want to be able to generate something we call a universal mask. So the idea of a universal mask is that you, you have a recipient's identity. You have some, per, some identity that you're sending your message to. And you specify that. And you specify what the message is along with the public parameters. And you get back uh, what I call a universal mask U. Okay? So you get this information U. And we should be able to use U then to derive um, matrices X and Y, the so solution matrices X and Y, based on some other arbitrary identity. So uh, some other identity ID prime. It could be, any, it could be anything. This, this is not chosen by the encryptor. It's chosen, it will be, it'll be chosen by the evaluator. Uh, so it'll be any arbitrary identity. We should be able to derive um, an X and Y such that uh, the, the, the equation there is, is satisfied. So that's the, that's the idea of, of the masking system. So we're going to use this as a building block for the moment to, to describe our, our compiler, and then we'll come back to how we concretely construct a masking system. So just first of all, what, um, what, what should it satisfy? Well, well the, the correctness uh, condition uh, is fairly straightforward, so we need that equation back there to be, to be satisfied. And we also need the error to be bounded in some way. So we've got um, a, a, an expansion poly polynomial associated with every masking system. And usually this is a, a, a quite a low, um, it's, quite a, it's usually linear. It's, it's quite a low de degree polynomial. So it, it, that, that blows up the, 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 the noise that we get. So we have to keep our noise on, under, this, under this limit. Um, the security property then is that um, it's similar to the standard selective security or, or adaptive security game. And the only change is that instead of giving, giving us a challenge ciphertext, we, we, give, we, we, give, we give the adversary um, the, the, a universal matrix U. So that, that's simply the, the only difference. So, it's, it, so th these are the security requirements. And again, the main challenge, of course, is going to try to pr prove this secure. Um, and we'll get back to our concrete masking system in, in a while. So just the, the abstract compiler then, just using, using the uh, masking system. So the four properties in total, and we need the three that we inherited before. So these are the three that, that GSW requires, the, the top three. And then the fourth requirement is our masking system. So we need, we need for whatever scheme, LWE-based scheme we're using, here we're calling it E, for example. Um, in whatever E we're using, we need to find a masking system that is correct and is secure for E. And that, that's our, our, so far we've only been able to find um, in the identity-based setting anyway, um, a, a single uh, LWE scheme where we can get a masking system, we, we construct a masking system for, um, it, it, we, there seem, we, we seem to fail at constructing it for most other schemes. Just, 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 we'll get maybe some of those reasons uh, later. Um, so the, the abstractly then, the, the compiler to, to Setup is going to be the same as whatever the E scheme is, the same with uh, key generation. Um, and again, you, you, you specify how many, how many maximum number of identities you want to support. So if you want to support, uh, like let's say, a uh, evaluation with up to 100 different identities, you can you set that as, as the large D parameter. And to encrypt, to encrypt the message, uh, you simply output the, the universal mask. So you use the masking system to generate a universal mask, and you output that. So, so encryption is, is pre pretty um, straightforward. Evalu evaluation then simply takes in uh, a sequence of ciphertext. So each ciphertext uh, simply consists of the identity that it corresponds to, and along with it's the, univer the universal mask, it, the, the last component there, the, the U1 um, to UL, um, the, 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 the last component. Um, so what we, then what we do is we actually take the number, we take all of the, the ciphertexts that have come in, and we look at the number of distinct identities. So you, you could have, like you could have all the ciphertext belonging to the same identity, or they could all belong to different identities, or it could be a mix. So we just calculate the number of distinct identities, and we're going to relabel them here just for simplicity. So we're going to just call them um, ID one to ID D. And so before then we can we can do our evaluation. We need to we need to transform it into a, we need to transform the ciphertext into a, a DN by DN matrix expanded matrix. Um, so if we take just an example here, this is the, the uh, we take just uh, any arbitrary ciphertext, 
Uh, let's say it has ID R, so R is the, it, it, it's, it's index out of um, how many number of distinct ones there are. And we start by setting C hat, so C hat's gonna be our final expanded matrix. We set that to zero, and then we, we simply run an algorithm for all, for, for every, every single uh, identity in, in, in our set. Um, we, 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 we use the derived mask algorithm for our masking system um, with, with that particular identity identifier. So we use that to, to, to get our X and Y. And, and then we simply set, set the, 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 um, we set the sub matrices in, in, in C hat uh, to, we, we set the, um, along the diagonal, we set it to, to Y, I, and then we, we add, whatever um, index we have, we, we set the other position, we add on X, I. And again, this will make a bit more sense in a while, but um, the, 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 it, it, this is a, simply a generalization of the, the case we had earlier for, for two, two identities. So now we're going to try and just describe the masking system. Um, I'm probably going to run out of time, and I don't, I don't have uh, as much technical detail in there as, as, as maybe, maybe, maybe I could have had. Um, and hopefully I can try to explain it best I can with, with these slides. Um, so if we, so we take any, any uh, recipient's identity, and again, ID prime is going to be um, some other identity, and in this case, we're going to relax it. We're going to relax the requirement, and we're going to let the encryptor choose what, what that identity is, what ID prime is. Um, so it can be, so we'll let, we'll let the encryptor choose that. Um, and so again, uh, we, we need to find, we need to find row vectors, this, in this case, that satisfy the, the equation that we had. So we need to fi find xi and, and yi um, that, that, so, that satisfy this equation. Um, so we can start off, we, one way of doing this is we can, gener we can generate yi as a GSW encryption of zero, so just a, a vector encryption of zero under the identity id prime. So remember id prime is whatever uh, our target is. And so we're going to look, just look at the structure, and this is where I'm missing some of the technical detail because I haven't given you background on the GPV uh, system. So the GPV is the, is the LWE-based scheme we're actually using here uh, to construct the masking system for us. So we're using uh, GPV is the only one we could get it, it, it was compatible with. Um, so without, without how to explain the, the, the details of G, GPV, if you haven't seen it before, um, I can just um, give, give you an overview. Essentially, how, what, what YI will look like, it'll look like, um, it look like adding on the, the plain text to, to a bit decomposition of, and then you've, you've got, you've got the, the ciphertext, the, the GPV ciphertext. And you can think of that as having two, two components. The first component, you can think of it as a scalar, and the second component is a vector. And t typically, we, we can, we usually have some, we have some um, randomness vector R, and we multiply that by, by our public matrix A, and we add on a nice vector. So, th so it's a standard LWE-based scheme. Um, and the first component then consists of whatever the, the user's identity is. So in this case, we're representing it by ZID prime. And we get the inner product of ZID prime with, with, with the randomness vector R. And again, we, we add on some noise. So that's typically what a GPV ciphertext will look like. Um, so we could also instead generate YI as similar, except instead of having the first component of the GPV ciphertext as we had before, we're going to just change that to zero. So we're just going to replace it with zero. And if, so effectively, what we're doing is that we're stripping out the first number of of, of columns of our matrix. So this will happen for the full Y matrix. We'll be stripping out all the columns. But we, we need to be able to, re, we have to replace them somewhere. Uh, because w w if we take the, the inner product with, of, of our new YI with our, our, v, our um, secret key vector, we're, we're, going to, we're going to have a factor that we need to cancel out. We're going to have um, this, this product, inner product, ZIDR, that's, that's going to be left. So we need to s somehow get that in and, and try, to, try to cancel it out. So that, in roughly speaking, that's, that's what we're going to have to try to do. So we have to try to cancel out this term, the inner product between ZID prime and, and, and R. And one way we could do this, if we could generate XI such that the inner, when you got the inner product with XI and your secret key vector, you ended up getting this, this exact uh, inner product. So you, you can easily, um, straightforwardly do this by um, blinding it. So just getting a GPV encryption of zero and adding it, on, adding it on to whatever the value is you want to blind. 
So the movement blind is just hiding it in a way that you, can, you can't recover it outright later, but you can, you, you can unblind it effectively. Um, so we, this, this allows us to um, use this approach that we have back on the slide back here. So we're able to, um, we're, we're able to um, straight, straightforwardly re remove the, 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 uh, a number of, of columns and we're able to um, fill in that value where, where we removed it in, across to, to, to the other matrix where it will be cancelled out then when we get the, when we get the inner product with, the, with that secure key vector. So it's just for, you think of it, we're moving, we're moving across matrices and the idea of it is that we, we, otherwise we, we, would, we would violate, violate semantic security quite easily here. We, we, need, we need to be able to hide the plain text uh, and require the, the, the recipient's ID, identity or secret key vector to, to get anything, any information about that. Um, so, so, um, so then just for convenience, so we just, we, just for simplicity, we could define an algorithm blind. It simply takes in the value you want to blind, so some element of your ring, along with the target identity and it outputs, it flattens simply the first component, the vector where it adds the first component to the value that you want to blind. So that, that's a quite, quite straightforward algorithm. Um, so we have to provide a, an XI counterpart, so something that, that works with the YI uh, that we, we generated already. We simply have to set XI as a blinding of this inner product, um, set ID prime and, and R. So we, we have to blind that inner product and we simply set uh, X to that. So, that. so this so far will actually get us a very straightforward masking system, but the only limitation that we have is the encryptor has to choose what the other person's identity is. So, it, you know, if, if it's, uh, they, they have to know in advance what the other person's identity will be, and that, that's, we want to be able to remove that restriction. We'd like, to, we'd like that the evaluator could simply choose any. Excuse me? Sorry to interrupt, but we're running four minutes late, and the next session is going to start very soon, and uh, we need to switch sorry. the track. Can you wrap up? Sorry, this is my, my last slide. Um, sorry about that. Um, so uh, the, the only, only change we have to make here to, to work for all identities is that we have to somehow generalize it so that we, we, can, get, we can blind this product Z of D prime or for any ID prime. So for any, for any identity, that's chosen at any stage, we, we, should, we need to do that. So we need to be able to provide more information in, in our, in our um, universal mask to do this. And one way of doing it is to um, simply fill on the property that we saw earlier, that we could take the bit decomp and powers of two together and get, get the product. So what if we just blind, blinded each coefficient of powers of two, and then we could just you could just take a subset sum, then whatever, the, whatever your, your decomposition is, you just simply, um, you simply take a subset sum and you get, you get, you get the, the inner product. So that, that's just one straightforward way of doing it. And, and this gets us... Sorry, we have to stop. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you.